Hello again and welcome to another Warhammer 40k Imperial Guard video and today guys I'm going to be doing a rumour roundup for the upcoming 9th edition Imperial Guard Codex. Now to be clear these very much are rumours that I'm going to be talking about today. This is not going to be covering the leaked models that we've had confirmation on like the new Cadians or the Rogal Dawn or the new Lord Commissar. These are the rumours, the things that have been circling around the internet. They very well may not be true so when you hear these things just take them with a big pinch of salt. But without further ado, let's take a look at these rumours. So the first thing that I want to talk about is the release date. Now, it's all but confirmed at this point that the Leagues of Votan will get their codex before the Imperial Guard does. It's kind of crazy that squats are getting codex before the Guard, but anyway, that's a topic for another day. Now, the reason that's all but confirmed is because the Leagues of Votan have got a battle report coming out on the Warhammer community page. And that kind of feels like, okay, they're doing a battle report for a codex that's going to be coming out soon. Now, what I have have heard is that the guard release date is going to be February 2023 that puts it very late in the release schedule and apparently we're going to get our codex for three to four months and then 10th edition is going to drop so it is going to be a very short lifespan on this codex although it may be that it has been designed with 10th edition in mind However, personal opinion here from bitter experience, I have found that when GW says, oh, we've written this codex with the next edition in mind, that does not tend to be the case at all. So I'm not overly confident about that. At this point, I think I would rather be the first codex of edition because then you know you've been written with that edition in mind rather than the last codex of an edition. But moving on to the next rumour that's been circulating around the internet's water cooler, I have heard that there will be no more veteran squads, conscripts or special weapon squads going into this codex. In fact, the only infantry choices you're really going to have are your infantry squads and your heavy weapon squads. I personally really hope this rumour isn't true because if it is, it's going to be such a shame for veterans because they've been in the codexes of guard players for a very long time. You've always had your hardened veterans. If they get rid of them, it's just going to feel wrong. And then if you get rid of conscripts, you're just going to kill infantry guard as a playstyle overnight. And that just seems such a shame because it is one of the iconic playstyles of the Imperial Guard. It just... It wouldn't feel like a guard army if you couldn't throw waves of infantry at the enemy. I mean, half of our memes are built around that. And I feel the same way about special weapon squads as I do about veterans. It just seems such a shame to get rid of quite an iconic unit for the guard. And they've been useful in previous editions. Just because they've been no good in the 8th edition codex doesn't mean they wouldn't be useful in the next codex. Speaking of things they are apparently getting rid of, supposedly there'll be no more old school regiment traits in the new codex. So that means no more Vestroyan, Valhallen, Talan, Mordian, Armageddon, Steel Legion. They're all going to be gone. And the four regiment traits that we're going to have in the book are going to be Cadian, Katachan, Krieg and Tanith first and only. Now that's an interesting one, that last one, because Tanith literally only had one regiment. But they are the poster boys of the guard, so I could kind of see why games workshop might do that if we did lose the old regiments that would just be such a shame there's a lot of people that have a lot of fluff and love for those old regiments so it would be sad to see them go now that kind of covers apparently what's going to be missing from the new codex but let's go through some of the changes and stuff that's going to be added so supposedly overall the codex is going to have a more elite feel and it's going to feel more like the the last sons of cadia rather than the endless waves of guardsmen going forward Apparently, officers and command squads are going to be joined together at the hip, so no longer will you have them as separate units, and the command squad will gain the character keyword. That would be really, really cool if they could do that. Suppose there's going to be a whole new unit added called the Field Ordnance Battery. It's kind of going to be similar to the old gun carriages or something in between those and the current heavy weapon teams. And supposedly, the weapon options for this field artillery thing is going to be the Bombast Field Gun, Heavy Las Cannon, and Malleus Rock. Rocket launcher. I've also heard some rumours around Scions. Supposedly their hotshot last guns are going to get a 24 inch standard range and sixes to hit will explode. I've also heard that the Guard Combat Patrol, the new starter box, will be made up of a armoured sentinel, a command squad, one of the new field ordnance batteries and a squad of the new Cadian shock troops. Now, I've also heard that you will be able to mix and match regiment traits when you're building your army. No longer do you need to stick to a single regiment like pure Cadians or pure Catachans. You'll be able to take a mixture and what you will miss out on is regiment specific stratagems, but you won't miss out on your big army wide bonus to this is to kind of represent that the guard is made up of many different regiments working together. And speaking of stratagems, there has been a rumor about the Catachan Vicious Traps one. 
And apparently it's going to work like in the enemy charge phase, spend XCP when a unit is charged and is in terrain. Roll D6 plus one if the unit is Katachan or Gorillas, or plus one if the unit has a Melter Mine, and plus one if Sly Marbo is on the battlefield. On a two to five, the enemy unit suffers D3 mortal wounds, and on a six plus, the enemy unit suffers two D3 mortal wounds. So that would be a big improvement over the current Vicious Trap stratagem. And another thing I've heard is that infantry squads will no longer be able to take heavy weapons in the squads, but they will be able to take two special weapons instead. And I've also had a bit of a rumour around the Rogal Dawn tank. Apparently it's not going to be called the Rogal Dawn, it's going to be called the Praetorian. And Rogal Dawn is known as the Praetorian of Terror, and that's why people thought it was called the Rogal Dawn tank. But actually, it is called the Praetorian tank. Now, the last rumor that I want to talk about is not so much about what's in the codex or what's changed, but it's about why the codex has been so delayed. Supposedly, and this has come from members of the community testing team, the book was just too powerful and they've had to send it back to GW four times and say, look, this thing is just just too bonkers it's just too powerful it ne you need to go back to the drawing board with it and so that's why it's been so delayed because gw just can't seem to quite get it right and to make it work within the confines of ninth edition so that's an interesting room if that's true I don't know if that one, I don't know if any of these are true to be honest. Like I said, take them all with a big pinch of salt. We've not seen any evidence to back this up, but especially that last one, GW has shown no issue with releasing broken things and fixing them in post. So I'd be surprised if they made an exception for the Imperial Guard. And that's it, folks. That is all of the rumors that I have been able to find circulating around the internet about the new Guard Codex. So it's going to be interesting to see how many of these rumors turn out to be true. It could be that they're all absolutely on the mark and this video goes out and GW is like, oh my God, huge leak. Or it could be that none of them are true and it's just a lot of speculation or wish listing that has then been taken out of context. We just don't know. But it will be interesting to figure out which one of these are true and which ones aren't when the Codex does drop. I hope you have enjoyed today's video. Let me know down in the comment section what you think and if you've heard of any rumours yourself. And of course, if you have enjoyed it, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel. If you've really enjoyed today's video and you want to see more content, then please consider becoming a channel member or Patreon supporter. It makes a huge difference and allows me to put out as much content as I do. And I just want to take a moment now to say a big thank you to the latest channel members and Patreon supporters. So a big thank you to Jesse Patton, Andrew, Daniel Shepard, Matthias Moller, Tom Tomo975, Ken K, Radiation Pony, and the KS Lord. Thank you guys for doing your part and becoming channel members. Also, a big thank you to Brian Jones, Kevin Morgan, Marshall, Ven Diesel, Goodwin Games, and Museum Fremen for signing up on the Patreon. I really appreciate the extra support, guys. And last but certainly not least, we have the War Masters. These are the top tier Patreon supporters, the people that have gone truly above and beyond the call of duty when it comes to supporting my channel. And I am eternally grateful to them. So a massive personal heartfelt thank you from me to Lucidium, Navy Veteran, Philip French, Ross Miller, Alex Dengal, John Stubbs, Nicholas Walsh, Swordfish Trombone, Diesel Fox, Tom Sutton and August Varney. Thank you guys. I really, really appreciate your very generous support. And it's just, it, it is life changing guys. So thank you so much. I really hope you've enjoyed today's video. Thank you for watching. And of course, as always, I'll see you guys next time.